Hello and welcome to this uh, special exploring session looking at a dialogue. Uh, this is explicitly a satirical dialogue uh, from the uh, uh, 1540s uh, by, uh, I assume by attribution, uh, uh, it's been attributed to fairly firmly to Luke Shepard who wrote various satires that were published during the reign of Edward VI. Um, and yeah, this is, this is the first of a a number of potential dialogue sessions that we're going to be doing looking at dialogue -y things. Uh, they're not designed to be dramatic, but they might function dramatically and be interesting. Therefore, we're going to look at them. Um, so, yeah, so I, I am your host, Robert Crichton, and uh, with me today is... Liza Graham, actor and jack-of-all-bollocks in London. Mm. And we are literally in London. We're actually in the same room. Lateral flow tests have been done. We are not on Zoom. Um, this is this is a very, very delightful kitchen and there is coffee. And my, my God, does that, that make things so much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, John Bonham, Master Parson um, by Luke Shepard. Um, Maybe it was actually printed on the front. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, we, we're going to sort of saunter through this text. It opens with a sort of general homily um, thing, uh, by the looks of it. Uh, so, uh, uh, I, I don't know, maybe we should alter lines for that one. Um, and then, uh, if you'll be the parson, would you like to be a parson today? It's always been an ambition of mine. I'll be John Bond. Uh, so, we just have a bit of a read through. It's not very long, it's very short. Um, some dialogues are very long, and some dialogues are just far away. Um, so, uh, I'll, I'll do the first line, you do the second line of the opening homily, and then we'll, uh, we'll saunter into the thing. Alas, poor fools, so sore ye be laid. No marvel it is, though your shoulders ache. For ye bear a great god which ye yourselves made. Make of it what you will, it is a wafer cake. Between two irons printed it is and bake. And look where idolatry is, Christ will not be there. Wherefore lay down your burden, an idol ye do bear. Alas, poor fools. And it's actually, it's, 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 it's alas, poor fools in, 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 in the, the, the version I've got here. It's, ah, it's there's lineation. There's lineation, lineation. to, uh, yeah. to, yeah, so... Uh, so if you're in any doubt what this is about, <laughs> uh, yes, we're, we're, we're going into um, theological issues here. So let's just say this is a, not an ecumenical, well, it is an ecumenical matter, I suppose. Uh, I, I'm just <laughs> loving the exposition of in-period cooking technology. Mm. Um, I've seen wafering irons, uh, which uh, basically they're two broad, flat disks of metal uh, with designs imprinted on them rather like a waffle iron but the designs are usually holy they often feature the virgin and child um and the, and the discs of metal are attached to two very long handles so you you get your ball of dough you sandwich it between the two discs of metal uh you close it with the long handles and then you hold it over the fire uh until until it is baked and um that was how they made communion wafers in those times although that was also how they made uh wafers that were not holy that were just um you nice. know fun to eat mm. L liza was doing gestures there which which sadly uh, doesn't doesn't read on the podcast but you know was... i did my best to explain it verbally yes <laughs> <laughs> shall we read some text <laughs> yes indeed what john bond good morrow to thee now good morrow mass parson so more i thee what meanest thou, John, to be at work so soon? The sooner I begin, the sooner shall I have done, for I tend to walk no longer than none. Uh, marry, John, for that God's blessing on thy heart, for surely some there be will go to plough and cart and set naught by this holy Corpus Christi even. They are the more to blame, I swear by St. Stephen. But tell me, Mark Parson, one thing, and you can, what scene is Copsy Kirsty? A, a man or a woman? Uh, why, John, knowest thou not that? I tell thee it was a man. It is Christ his own self, and tomorrow is his day. We bear him in procession, and thereby know it ye may. I know, Master Parson? Nah, by my fame, me think it is a mad thing that ye say that it should be a man. How can it come to pass? Because ye may him bear within so small a glass. 
Why, neighbor John, and art thou not there? Now may I perceive ye love this new gear. God's the bold master, I should be of that faction. I question why your mastership in way of cumulication. A, a plain man ye may see will speak as cometh to mind. Ye must hold us accused, for low men be but blind. I am an old fellow of fifty winter and more, and yet in all my life I knew not this before. No, indeed? Why sayst thou so? Upon thyself thou liest. Thou hast ever known the sacrament to be the body of Christ. Ye, sir, ye say true all that I know indeed, and yet, as I remember it, it is not in my creed. But as for Cropsy Kirsty to be a man or no, I knew not till this day by the way my soul shall do. Why, foolish fellow, I tell thee it is so, for it was so determined by the church long ago it is both the sacrament and very Christ himself. Most please a mass parson, then make ye Christ an elf, and the maddest made man that ever body saw. What? Peace, madman, thou speakest like a daw. It is not possible his manhood for to see. Why, sir, ye tell me it is even very he, and if it be not his manhood, it godhead must be. I tell thee none of both. What means thou? Art thou mad? No, neither mad nor drunk, but, but, but to learn I am glad, for to displease your mashib I would be very loath. Ye grant me here plainly that it is none of both, then, then it is but a cake. But I pray ye be not wroth. <laughs> wroth, quoth I, by the mass? <gasps> Thou makest me swear an oath. I had liever with a doctor of divinity to reason than with a stubble cur that eateth beans and peas and... Oh, I cry ye mercy, Master Parson, patience for a season... In all this communication is neither felony nor per treason. No, by the mass, but hearest thou, it is plain heresy. Oh, I, I am glad it chanced so there was not witness by, and if there had, I cared not, for ye spake as ill as I. Hmm. I speak, but as I heard you say, I wot not what ye thought, ye said it was not God nor man, and made it worse than naught. I, I, I meant not so. Ye took me wrong. Ah, sir, ye sing another song. I dare not worry them with you long. I see well now ye have a knack to say a thing and then go back. Oh, no, John, I was but a little overseen. But thou meantest not good faith, I ween, in all this talk that was us between. And there I'd normally ring a bell or something, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a bell with me, so I can't. Um, uh, I can get you a bell. No, no, it's all right. I, 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 yeah. Next time, next time. Um, it's inter- there's lots of interesting things that I'm picking up. Um, verbal echoes of other texts. Um, uh, the, the, there's lots of bits that they're, they're commonplace phrases, so you see, you hear them a lot. You know, felony, neither felony nor treason, singing another song, things like that. Um, specifically, I know that turns up in summoning of every man, but you know, these are common places that turns a phrase that you just get everywhere. Um, but it, uh, it, it sort of bounces around really nicely. And yeah, I, 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 I I'm liking my John Bond very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, just asking questions. Yeah, man, you know, who is this Kirsty Christie? Um, and so I'm thinking actually that associating this particular text with, you know, with, we should, we should, uh, connect this with um, you know Corpus Christi pageants, um, yeah. You know specifically the the demonstration of the uh, of the host and, and and you know the celebration of the body of Christ, which is what we're talking about here. We're not talking about mystery plays. We're talking about the, the, the ceremonial side of things, of which we have. Did we do a Lydgate, which did a Corpus Christi? I think thing. I think we did, but just to remind anyone listening, Corpus yeah. Christi. Is a holiday in late summer, I think. Yeah, it's a movable feast. So. Movable feast, uh, and the um, the host, that is the communion wafer, is paraded through the streets in an ornamental little box called a pix, and it's paraded through the streets by the clergy, and uh, you're supposed to follow it. 
the triumphal procession. Mm. And and that sort of sometimes makes it difficult to sort out um, mystery cycles because mystery cycles sometimes also happen on Corpus Christi. Um, mm. Yes, uh, isn't there a really anti-Semitic play of the sacrament where there, there is, and that's the other thing this is reminding me of, but in reverse because yes. here they're sort of mocking the the the, 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 the wafers and and they t- it's the turn of phrase of cake. Um, he, he, I, John Bond said at one point, which is exactly the same. So it's like John Bond is the the, 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 the weird anti-Semitic uh, characters in, in Play of the Sacrament here. It's sort of that, that it's, it's backflip has happened in 50 years. Yeah, yeah. That, um, but then the sacrament itself is not on stage, it, it, implicitly not on stage in this dialogue, no. because Corpus Christi is tomorrow yeah. in this dialogue. Yes. They're just, um, they're arguing about it. It's yes. not sitting right there in its pics. And so you this... have to make the wafers freshly. Mm. Um, of which it's a, another satire about the keeping of the, of, of the wafers, which uh, we may or may not look at um, at mm. some point in the future. If you get an excuse to eat some wafers, you absolutely should. They're they're absolutely delicious. Mm. Um. Um, but so so the central argument here is, of course, is it a literal uh, uh, transfiguration uh, of, uh, of 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 body and uh, of of a wafer into the body of Christ, or is it just a ceremonial pr- uh, element? And so this is uh, this is an evangelical. Uh, Protestant text um, uh, questioning things that are, are more uh, 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 the previous Catholic, uh, Catholic doctrine has put in place and written during the reign of uh, Edward the Sixth. So Protestantism suddenly there's quite a lot of this material suddenly starts come and pouring out. Yeah, I mean we're still establishing the nature of mm. Protestantism at this point, and there's a there's a whole spectrum of people who believe that their version is what Protestantism is. And there's some pretty extreme iconoclasm mm. uh, that they, um, you know, they take the, I forget the number of the commandment, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Mm. And so this is when painted churches get whitewashed and some stained glass windows get destroyed, although the majority get destroyed during the Civil War mm. much later. And um, uh Images of saints, uh, the wooden painted uh, statues of saints that uh, people would often leave offerings to, um, they're um, they, uh, they're taken down or um, or or you know they the practice of leaving offerings to them is is discouraged or making ornate clothing for them, and the host is part of that because, like I said earlier, it would often be stamped with the image of say the virgin and child or. Christ in glory or something and, and it's this, this we, we know this because there are extant wafering irons yes um, and uh, yes yeah, so we're, we're in a period of great change so, you know Henry VIII went a certain amount uh, it all was sort of pushed um, because of circumstances but you know his theological position was quite conservative um, and then when he uh, dies uh, Edward VI goes the other way and goes much more uh, but all of these things are a series of battles that are going on as to what what the nature of Christianity should be within a, a separated uh, uh, confession uh, the, after the break with Rome. So this is part of that debate, um, and it's doing it in quite an engaging manner. It has to be said so far. I've, I've enjoyed their little oh, back yes. and forth. You know, there is character here. This is performable uh, as a text. I, I feel um, you know, regardless of what we think about its content. Um, but you know, you, you have a knack to say a thing and then go back. Oh, you can't do backsies. I heard you say it. <laughs> John is every annoying guy on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then you know, the person also might be annoying. Who knows? We'll find out as we go on. Shall Shall I take it from our from the last line? Yes, that would be helpful. I mean, just on actually the nature of the parson. The the, the clearly you get you're getting very cross. At one point, because I go, you know, uh, I pray you be not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's true. I called you a stubble cur and mm. uh, that eateth beans and peas. Uh, yeah. So, um, so you're getting very cross, and I'm being terribly reasonable. I think that's the that's the that's the dynamic here. Isn't it? It, I'm just going to, in my simple way, explain what I think, and, and you're going to get incredibly annoyed with me. <laughs> Shut up and eat some beans. Yeah. <laughs> know your place. <laughs> right. Yes. 
No, John, I was but a little overseen. But thou mentest not good faith, I ween, in all this talk that was us between. I? No, chow, it shall not so be that John Barnes shall inherit it be called. Then might he say him so foul befall. But now, if thou wilt, mark me well. From beginning to ending, I will thee tell of the godly service that shall be tomorrow. That or I have done, no doubt thou wilt sorrow. To hear... Let's see. That or I have done, no doubt thou wilt sorrow to hear that such things should be fordone. And yet in many places they have begun to take away the old and set up new. Believe me, John, this tale is true. Go to, Master Parson, say on and well to thrive. Ye be the jolliest gemmen that ever saw in my life. We shall first have matins. Is it not a godly hearing? Foy, yes, me think tis a shameful gay cheering. For oft times on my prayers, when I take no great keep, ye sing so arrantly well, ye make me fall asleep. Gah. Then have we procession, and Christ about we bear. That is a poison holy thing, for God himself is there. Then come we in, and ready us dress full solemnly to go to mess. That is not here a mischievous thing. The mess is vengeance holy for all their sin. Then say we confiteor and miseriatur. Please, Lord, tis abominable matter. And then we stand up to the altar. This gear is as good as our lady solar. And so goes forth, with the other deal, till we have read the pistol and gospel. That is good, Master Parson, I know right well. Is that good? Why, what sayest thou to the other? Oh, marry, horrible good, I say, none other. So is all the mass, I dare avow, so is all the mass, I dare avow this, as good in every point as pistol or gospel is. Ah, oh, the foul evil it is, who would think so much in faith I ever thought that it had been no such. Then have we the canon that is holiest. A spiteful gay thing of all that ever I wist. Then have we the memento, even before the sacring. Well learned, I see, by your reckoning, but ye will not forget such an elish thing. And after that, we consecrate very God and man, and turn the bread to flesh with five words we can. The devil ye do, I trow. There is pestilence business. Ye are much bound to God for such a spit holiness. A gallows gay gift with five words alone? To make both God and man, and yet ye see none? Ye talk so unreasonable, well, it maketh my heart learn. As old a fellow as I am, I see ye well I may learn. Yea, John, and then with words holy and good, even by and by we turn the wine to blood. Lo, will ye see? Who would have thought it, and that ye would so soon from blood to wine to blood have brought it? And yet, except my mouth be better tasted than mine, I cannot feel it other than that it should be wine. And yet I won't ne'er a cause there may be why, perchance ye have drunk blood oftener than I ever did I. <laughs> Truly, John, it is blood, though it be wine in taste. As soon as the word is spoke, the wine is gone and past. Ay, sessions on it for me, my wits are me benumb, for I cannot study where the wine should become. Study, quotha, beware, and let such matter go. To meddle much with this may bring ye soon to woe. Yea, but Master Parson, ye think it were right if, that if ye des that if I desired you to make my black ox white, and you say it is done. And still it's black in sight. Ye might me deem a fool for to believe so light. I marvel much ye will reason so far. I fear if ye use it, it will ye mar. No, no, sir, I trust of that I will beware. I pray you with your matter again forth to fare. And then we go forth and Christ's body receive, even the very same that Mary did conceive. The devil it is, ye have a great grace to eat God and man in so short space. And so we make an end as it lieth in an order. But now the blessed mass is hated in every border, and railed on and reviled. 
with words most blasphemous, but I trust it will be better with the help of catechismus. For though it came forth but even that other day, yet hath it turned many to their old way, and where they hated mass and had it in disdain, there have they mass and matins in Latin tongue again. Ye yea, even in London self, John, I tell thee truth. They be full glad and merry to hear of this, God knoweth. Even in London. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> By my truth, Mass Parson, I like full well your talk. But Mass be no more Massins. The right way will I walk, for though I have no learning, yet I know cheese from chalk. And I can perceive your juggling as crafty as you are. And leave your devilish mass and the communion to you take. And then will Christ be with you, even for his promise sake. Why art thou such a one and kept it so close? Well, all is not gold that hath a fair gloss. Farewell, John Bon. God bring thee in better mind. I thank you, sir, for that you have seen very kind. But pray not so for me, for I am well enough. Whistle, boy. Drive forth! God speed us in the pal. At Browden, pull off that awesome crab. Free company, garland, with our black blab. Have again, ball before. Hey, three, ooh. <sighs> Shirley boy, come with that. Homeward we may go. <sighs> Finis, imprinted at London by John Day and William Sears, dwelling in Sepulchre's parish at the sign of the resurrection, a little above Hoburn Conduit. Cum gratiae privilegio ad imprimendum solum. Now, which mystery play is it, which the Cain and Abel, I think it's Townley, where you've got the whole drawing the pot, the cane uh, drawing the plough or some, something like that. There's a whole... Yes, it sounds like Townley. Townley puts a lot of comedy into Cain and Abel. Yeah, and that bit at the end, because, I mean, I, I haven't changed any of the, the, the spelling on any of that bit at the end, because I just went, I mm. haven't... I think these are just noises. <laughs> well, <laughs> some of this I, 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 I didn't know how to pass any of it, so well, I just gave up. Bra Brown Dunn is going to be one of his uh, yeah. plow animals. Yeah, that's why I assumed that most of these were the these were yeah. names, um, but I, I I haven't really passed any of it. So um, I, I was just assuming that you know after God speed us in the plow, it's basically an exit line, and it makes it dynamic. It makes it you know we've got us we now have a location. We're out in a field. Presumably, mm. and the parson's just walking by. Yes, um, and that's there's, there's there's interesting little bits. I I think when we re rejoined the text, I was a little initially a bit lost actually as to what was going on. Um, but actually, it's just a recap of the of the procession and the, and and the, uh, the 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 various um, parts of the ceremonial, isn't it? Indeed, and it reminds me again of. Um those scenes in morality plays where someone serious says a line and then the vice repeats, uh, uh, the vice tells us in an aside what he thinks. So John Bond, even though, according to the playwright, he's morally in the right, is is sort of in the role of the vice here, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, and that's the question. Do we count these as asides? Um, is is Parson here overhearing, you know, that that is a poison holy thing for God himself is there? You know, it... You know, uh, in that sense, it, it, how dramatic is it in, in by implication, or is he just saying it very openly? I I think because I don't quite know how to pitch those lines actually, because some of yeah, them sound yeah. like they could be. You know, he's being very positive and and, and things uh, yes. about elements of the the ceremony. And... Say yeah, saying things like vengeance, holy. You know, it's it's the sort of thing where. Uh, it could be positive, and he probably intends it negatively, but mm. uh, but he also probably in, mean, intends it to pass as positive. Mm. Who knows? Yeah, because um, is, is he being serious when he says, you know, is is it that he just doesn't understand what certain words mean? With John Bond, you know, she's Lord, yeah. uh, tis a abominable matter. Does he think well, that's a nice word? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it's the thing is, he's not against religion; he's against elements of the the, the ceremony, and that's yes. Um, we need um, to also make a decision. We've got this problem, of course. We've got mass is spelt as mess. For, uh, so, uh, well, sometimes it needs to be mess for the sake of for the, the rhyme. rhyme. And that's the thing. Is that I, 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 I modernised it where it wasn't in a rhyme to mass. But I'm wondering whether we, we just I, what, what to do with that, whether we just go with that sort of slight... Because it's an accent thing to a degree as well. It could be. Mm. It could be elevated RP. It could be mess. Yes, um, <laughs> um, but because uh, John Bond is written it, it with a slight dialect, he's using a few uh, dialect words. Yeah, I I forms. love that. I love how it's written. 
in a, a sort of mummer set with, you know, Zs for Ss. Uh, there was one Eich for I, mm. uh, things like that. And, and it's, but it's not actually excessive. It's just to give you a hint of his character. It's just enough to give you that run in, whereas the parson is slightly more, he's much more, um, well, he's not RP, but, you know, he's much more. He's a little more high. Yeah. And I do like that. Ye- even in London. <laughs> <laughs> even well, in London, they're, 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 they're not that godless. <laughs> well, no, the, uh, I mean, London will have, with all its students and its abundance of clergy and its manic street preachers, um, London will have been a, a hotbed of doctrinal debate. Mm. So uh, I'm saying, mm. yay, even, even in London, um, London self. Uh, so where where they hated mass and had it in disdain. So mm. there's been, you know, your backlash against anything even vaguely Catholic, and mm. then saying, uh, and saying that um, the new catechisms or or whatever have have made people more at peace with ceremony as it as it used to be with mm. masses that include music and Latin. Mm. Yes, people like uh, you know, liking tradition and wanting to go back to. To tradition. I mean, Edward uh, was very keen on the sort of public preachy side of things. I mean, you know, build, even building. I think I this is off the top of my head. I didn't double check this, but I'm I'm fairly certain he actually builds a specific preaching area in in St Paul's churchyard, um, or it is built at the same time, and that you know there are big uh, things there. I could be wrong about that. Um, don't don't take that as gospel, as it were. <laughs> um, so yeah, and yeah, so the, we've got the parson going through the ceremonial. We've got John commenting on it. We have that slight awkward shift of language, you know, about uh, you know spiteful gay thing. Um, doesn't quite land in a modern context. I mean, we know it means bright and cheerful, but um, it, it's the it's that weird juxtaposition he's using all the time. John Bon is using opposite words to each other. You know, it's a spiteful gay thing. Um, it's, you know, it's this, uh, poison holy thing. Um, it's, so yeah, it's doing, it's doing interesting job. Mm. Um, it's quite subtle actually. It, it's also not subtle. Um, <laughs> I love the fact John Bon is the, is the, the hero. <laughs> yeah. Well. You know, he's not a comedy rustic. He is comedy comedic. Um, but he is also just the voice of common sense. That's the, the logic of it. Yes, and in so many of the other dialogues we've looked at, it's been a knowledgeable person instructing a simple person, or mm. it, or in the case of Lucidus and Dubius, the knowledgeable person triumphs over being challenged by the simple person. But mm. here, the simple person, the salt-of-the-earth peasant, uh, has it right, and the parson has it wrong. Yeah, um, so... Uh... Yeah, and, and say it, 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 it's got life to it. It's got, it's, you know, it is, you know, it's it's not going to rock anybody's world, and obviously it's it's got a very specific propagandic purpose. Um, but it sort of goes into that what's happening in the late fifteen thirties, early fifteen forties ness of the other plays, which are proper plays rather than this, which is just a dialogue. Um, but there's nothing just about being a dialogue. So. Uh, any final thoughts? Um... Well, just that um, I I don't know when when there's a time of major cultural change, everything seems like a tipping point. Mm. But this dialogue does seem to occur at a a sort of balance point um, between what's seen as the old way and what's seen as the new. Mm. And it's interesting that John Bond reacts against being thought of as, as in favor of the new way. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a piece of, I suppose, religious propaganda in the end, but it's very well crafted and, mm. and it's not unentertaining. Yeah, and, and, and that, that's the thing. He does make, you know, some solid points about, you know, uh, I mean, I think it'd be a stretch to say, call it the scientific method. Um, but John Bond does say, you know, well, I've, I've tasted the, 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 the wine and it tastes remarkably like wine. You, 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 you must taste blood more often than I do. <laughs> the par- parson's like, I do what? Yeah. It's like, so. <laughs> Plot twist, vampire priest. Well, you know, uh, we've, we've had vampire Cupid, so, um, <laughs> you know, let's, uh, let's go. 
So, uh, all that remains is for us to go away and record this in a more proper fashion, potentially. Uh, so, yeah, maybe you'll hear, um, without us stumbling and tripping over and getting words wrong, uh, a better version of this in the future. Thank you to Eliza, and uh, You're welcome. Goodbye. <laughs>